Shout out to BWB, man. BWB, man. Shout out to Ben Wagon Boss. Shout out to Ben Wagon Boss. Shout out to Ben Wagon Boss. BWB, baby. Shout out to TLP Sports Club, baby. Buff Nation, what up? BWB, that's my Ben Wagon Buffs. What it is, what it does, and what it's gonna be. It's your man's Harry. Billion. Family, welcome to the Liberian Perspective. Right out the gate, please make sure to smash that subscribe button. Make sure to give me the thumbs up. Also, don't forget to add your voice to the conversation. Let me know how you feel about what I'm saying, the information that I'm going to bring to you today. It helps the algorithm to grow this channel. We're getting a little closer and closer on our road to 10,000 subscribers. So I appreciate you helping in that regard, guys. Don't forget to support the channel by copying your BWB merch. Look right here in this corner guys your bwb merch or gear will be right there you can support the most educated well-informed least delusional fan base in all of college football and we can say that confidently by copying your bwb band wagon buff merch so you do that and let me go ahead and get into this video that is all the business i got you know what time it is let's work in the recent days and weeks we've been getting a lot of new players coach prime even held some tryouts with some juco players coach prime is bringing in a lot of guys we have a couple of scholarship spots that are still available we may make offers to charlie off though we don't know we got some new players that are coming in players that have actually received some preferred walk-on spots that may be offered scholarship scholarships depending on how much they ball out somebody did ask me they was like yo do a video please on scholarships so that we can understand more about the scholarship process so i was like okay fine this is now the right time for us to understand how scholarships work and how the different color shirts that are in college football how all of that works into the whole scholarship idea so let's go ahead and go to the article so we can get more insight about scholarships let's go what are the different types of offers i could get one of the first surprises many student athletes and their families is the disappointingly low number of full ride athletic scholarships available. What may be just as surprising are the different types of offers athletes can actually receive from a school. To better understand the basis of athletic scholarship offers, here are a few key factors you should know. Most offers are typically one year agreements. Although multi year offers are becoming more popular, they are still rare. Verbal offers from a coach are not binding agreements. The National Letter of Intent, the NLI, is a legal binding contract between an athlete and the school. Since it is a contract, it is important that you fully understand the agreement. Hopefully, knowing these terms will give you a better understanding of the offers you may receive. Let's take a quick look at the most common offers a student athlete may receive from college and universities. Athletic scholarship offers, full ride scholarship offers, partial scholarship offer, walk-on offers, prefer walk-on offer recruited walk-on offer and unrecruited walk-on offer the multicolored shirts of college sports red shirt scholarship offer gray shirt scholarship offer blue shirt scholarship offer green shirt scholarship offer so let's go ahead and go through the different offers what do you get as a full ride when you get a full offer full ride athletic scholarships are only available in six college sports football men's basketball women's basketball women's gymnastics tennis volleyball these are known as head count sports that create revenue for the school. A full ride covers the major cost of attending college like tuition, room and board, books, and some course fees. The term full ride doesn't mean for the full four years. Full ride scholarships like all offers are one year agreements that may or may not be renewed. So you can have a full ride but when you're in school sometimes you will have activities or certain things that are built within that course that you may have to pay for. If you're in a class that maybe takes a trip to experience something that trip may not be covered and you may have to come out of pocket to pay for that extra thing that's going on in that class if you are a parent that's looking for information on that just make sure that you understand that even though you have a full scholarship certain things that are built within that class may not be covered let's move on to partial scholarships the remaining sports or equivalency sports in ncaa division one and two are where coach essentially have a pool of scholarship money that they can divide up amongst their team while not a full ride a partial 
partial scholarship offer can still cover a significant portion of college costs or very little. It may be that one student athlete on a team gets a scholarship that covers tuition while a teammate may only get offered a scholarship that covers the cost of books. As a response to COVID-19, NCAA D1 Council adopted legislation that loosened regulation regarding need-based aid and academic scholarships that are not tied to athletic ability. Starting August 1, 2020, teams in equivalency sports would not have any athletes need an academic-based aid count against the maximum athletic scholarship limit. Prior to this update, athletes had to meet certain criteria for additional aid to not be counted against a team's athletic scholarship limit. Teams will still have a maximum athletic scholarship cap, but student athletes can seek to stack as much need-based aid and academic scholarships on top of their athletic scholarship as they qualify for. With scholarship and family budgets being impacted by the coronavirus, this rule change should allow sports programs that have available funds to extend more money to families and athletes that need it, especially at pricier private colleges. While a partial scholarship might not be enough to compensate for an athlete's financial needs, NCSA's senior recruiting manager David Kamisic shares how student athletes can leverage scholarship offers and find additional resources to cover the cost of college. So let's talk about walk-on offers. Not all offers come with a monetary reward. Sometimes the reward is simply a spot on the roster. Walk-ons are far more common in college sports than most families and student athletes realize. It's important to understand the distinctions between the different types of walk-ons as you navigate the recruiting process. Preferred walk-on offer. A preferred walk-on offer promises you a roster spot, but you won't receive any athletic aid. So what exactly is a preferred walk-on? Being a preferred walk-on, walk-on is the highest status a recruit can get outside of receiving an athletic scholarship. No athletic aid is offered, but preferred walk-ons will go into college with a roster spot secured, receive a uniform, and have a strong chance of competing for playing time their first year. Can preferred walk-ons earn a scholarship? Yes. Scholarships can be earned going into a second season, but nothing is guaranteed. They are, however, typically first in line with scholarship dollars free up. Some student athletes will turn down scholarship offers offers at smaller schools to play for a bigger program as a preferred walk-on. But keep in mind, even preferred walk-ons can get cut during tryouts or team camp if they aren't meeting coach expectations. Do preferred walk-ons sign on signing day? Technically, preferred walk-ons don't have anything to sign on signing day as they aren't receiving athletic scholarship. However, walk-ons are an essential part of a successful team and college coaches want to celebrate their signing as well. Ask your future coach about having something to sign especially if your school is throwing a signing day party don't forget to rep your new school with some gear what is a recruited walk-on offer a recruited walk-on offer means there is interest from the coach but no official assistance so you must still earn a spot on the team through additional tryouts or summer training camp although there is no financial assistance or even a guarantee of making the team some student athletes still view a recruited walk-on offer as a great opportunity to play at the highest level of competition. Now let's talk about unrecruited walk-on offers. Typically, this is when a student athlete qualifies for admission to the school and plans to join the team through an open tryout. In this scenario, there is usually a conversation with the college coach prior to enrollment to confirm the student athlete will be able to try out for the team. There is a lot to consider with any type of walk-on offer. This is especially true if you have scholarship offers from other schools. Before I continue, I want to know, are you a parent that has an athlete and you have questions, is this information helping you? Let me hear from you. Let's continue. You have multicolored shirts. Let's find out what those multicolors mean. The multicolored shirts of college sports. While red shirt may be a familiar term to many student athletes and their families, there are actually a number of different shirt color terms that designate a student athlete's eligibility status. The color also shows how a coach sees a recruit contributing to the program in both the short term and long term. Let's go over the red shirt first the red shirt are they on a scholarship yes allowed to play no allowed to practice yes what does it mean the athlete will have a scholarship but cannot compete for one year they will get an opportunity to play four seasons in five years next we have the gray shirt are they on scholarship no are they allowed to play no are they allowed to practice no so what does it mean athlete postpones enrolling full time and participating with the team for one semester moving on to the green shirts are the 
green shirts on scholarship? Yes, they're on scholarship. Allowed to play? Yes. Allowed to practice? Yes. So what does it mean then? Athlete enrolls a semester early and participates with the team. All right, we're moving right along to the blue shirts. What is the blue shirts? Blue shirt, are you on scholarship? Yes. Allowed to play? No. Allowed to practice? Yes. Okay, so what does it mean? Like a red shirt, the athlete will practice with the team but won't be allowed to play for a year. Unlike a red shirt, the athlete must be unrecruited. Is this information helping you? Let me know in the comments. Typically, a red shirt athlete will have a scholarship but cannot compete for one year. They will participate in all team activities like practice, training, and receive benefits such as academic tutoring, but they will not see any playing time. However, they will get an opportunity to play four seasons in five years. Reasons for being red shirted include a coach wanting a year to physically prepare an athlete for college competition or a chance for a student athlete to recover from an injury. An academic red shirt would be a freshman who may not meet the academic eligibility requirements coming out of high school. What does red shirting mean? Red shirting refers to the practice of holding a player out of games for a season in order to extend their eligibility and develop their skills before they compete. Gray shirt scholarship offer. This is one of the more challenging offers from a college coach. A gray shirt is an incoming college freshman who postpones enrollment for a semester. Instead of enrolling right away in the fall, a gray shirt freshman enrolls in classes for the second term, like winter of freshman year. During their first semester of college, a gray shirt does not enroll as a full-time student. Instead, they only take part-time classes. A gray shirt also does not join the team, practice with the team, or receive a scholarship during their first part-time semester. The NCAA a allows student athletes five years to complete four years of sports eligibility after enrolling. So this means a gray shirt NCAA athlete officially starts their athletic eligibility once they enroll full time. Most coaches try to be clear about extending gray shirt offers, but some committed student athletes have been surprised to learn they have been gray shirted as National Signing Day nears. This is most often done at college programs that oversign, meaning they sign more student athletes than they have room for on the roster. Gray shirting helps college programs sign athletes early with the intention of having them actually join the team in the next season. Sometimes injuries and roster changes can mean gray shirt statuses can be rescinded and an athlete will be offered a roster spot earlier than expected. But it's important to have clear and open communications with college coaches about your role on the roster and the possibility of being gray shirted. Blue shirt scholarship offers. Blue shirting is becoming a more popular but hardly common way to creatively manage the number of athletic scholarships. Blue shirt rules allow for unrecruited players to be awarded a scholarship at the start of freshman practice. Like a red shirt, they will practice with the team but won't be allowed to play for a year. This allows a team that may have too many commits to essentially borrow against their next year's scholarship total. The rules are rather strict in regard to what is defined as being unrecruited. That means there was no official visit, no in-home coach visit, visit, no signed national letter of intent, no form of athletic aid. Given the recruiting restrictions, it is still a pretty rare occurrence for a student athlete to be considered for a blue shirt scholarship offer. Green shirt scholarship offer. More and more fall sports athletes are getting a jump on their college careers by graduating in December and enrolling a semester early. The benefits to green shirting includes the chance to get ahead on classes, attend spring training and practice with your new team while on scholarship before the new fall season. Student athletes who green shirt are allowed to play their first year but can also red shirt and have five years to play four seasons. Hopefully that scholarship information is helpful to somebody out there, maybe to a parent who follows the channel and they've been thinking about how scholarships work. It can motivate a lot of you parents. If you have kids and they have a lot of energy and you want to start them in athletics, there are benefits to going to college. These kids can go to college on athletic scholarships. So maybe it motivates you now now to get a jump on helping your kids to get into these special programs that helps them to develop their skills. If you don't have a lot of money, your kid can actually pay for their own college. Instead of telling your kid, you know we can't afford that, why don't you develop them, help them, tell them, go outside, go play, boy, go run. Girl, stop playing around. Go run, okay? Go jump over something. Do something. Climb a tree. 
athlete. I don't care what you do. Develop your skills. Become an elite athlete. You never know. It can pay for your college. Scholarships can actually help take a lot of burden off your pocketbook. Our kid is on an academic scholarship. You go to private school and that academic scholarship, it helps a lot on our income. Every year, we have to reapply. We have to submit income information. We have to submit our current income status. All of the tax information, they ask us a bunch of questions we have to answer. Every year, we have to go and answer those questions all over again. The same answers. We get upset. We moan. We groan. We're like, oh, why we got to do this again? Why don't they just use the information from last year? Just ask us one question. Is your situation the same? We're like, yeah, and then we just move on. Nope, that doesn't happen. You have to reapply every single year. And yes, you're going to submit the same information. If it changes, if it doesn't change, submit it again. And then every year, they add more information on top of that that they need now because this is money. This is money that somebody else could be using. So if you don't want to submit it, don't submit it. Go ahead and pay the money. But yes, yeah, scholarship is very valuable. Hopefully the information was helpful. I want to know what questions you may have about scholarship. Throw that stuff in the comment. Other people read the comment. They may have information. This is a community. So even if you don't have questions, but you just have something to add to the conversation, I would love to hear from you in the comments. So I'm going to leave it right there, guys. You know who I am. I am Harry B. Or what you just heard right there is the Liberian Perspective TLP Sports Club. Brrr.